Good morning and welcome to St Andrews for this service of celebration of the Feast of the Ascension of Christ. We read, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards towards heaven? In the chapel of the Ascension at Walsingham in England, if you look up above your head, you see a hole in the ceiling through which a pair of little pink feet disappear. I guess it is an attempt to capture the movement from Jesus' earthly life to his heavenly exaltation, but the effect is comic. It is so difficult to do, to capture the, in the dimensions of this world the dimensions of the next. We can only imagine it out of the resources at hand. Lots of painters have depicted the ascension, from icons in the 5th century through the Renaissance and the Baroque to the spectacular vision of the American painter Benjamin West, which is the cover piece for this morning's service. These painters, of course, had no way of knowing, for all of Leonardo's prescience, that the sight of men going up into the heavens could become rather banal in the era of Star Trek. Beam me up, Scotty. It was also a problem for the writers of the New Testament. How do they describe Christ's ascension? Scripture needs understanding, and the key to it is the person of Jesus Christ, risen, ascended, glorified, but not beyond us. His death has given us a share in his life, so that he's not a space traveller reaching escape velocity and leaving us behind. He's going ahead to prepare a place for us and invites us to live his risen and ascended life here on earth in anticipation of heaven. Living in anticipation is the fate of the Christian. And in the weirdness of the world at present, we are all living in anticipation of the new normal, whatever that may be. What's in front of us is unreadable, and it's going to be a while before we can see its shape, shade and colour. The uncertainty is difficult to live with, and the temptation to heed soothsayers strong. But better to look up, I think, to heaven, blinking and unsure. There are worse things than looking gormless. The photo montages this morning are firstly drawn from various representations of the Ascension by artists, and secondly, from a visit to the Chapel of the Ascension on the Mount of Olives, where, allegedly, there are two footprints which Jesus left behind as he left his apostles below, looking upwards towards heaven. I hope you enjoy the service.
Good morning and welcome to St Andrews for this Ascension Day service. This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We light this incense to remind us that our prayers rise to God in heaven, just as Jesus did on the day of his ascension to the Father. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray a collect for the times. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods, that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out for their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly, Two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him going into heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. 
Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet, singing praise to God, singing praises, singing praises to our King, singing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, singing praises with a song. God is King of the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards other saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my praise. I pray that the God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ while he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head all, over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples all of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We in heart and mind thither ascend, and with Christ continually dwell. So ends the collect for this Ascension Day written by Thomas Cranmer and appearing in the Book of Common Prayer, leads us into the spatial geography of this difficult doctrine. Which way is up? That Jesus was taken up into heaven appears in the ascension narratives of St. Mark, St. Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. One must ask whether God and heaven to which Jesus ascends are up and out in the skies. If not, and the language is metaphorical, then for a deeper inward truth, where should the thither take us? In existential terms, 
The ascension is about letting go, coping with grief, dealing with loss. This is despite the reassurance that Jesus gives throughout the Gospels, particularly in the Gospel of St. John, that the Holy Spirit is an adequate substitute for Christ. We have just extinguished the light of our decorous Paschal candle behind me, following the Ascension Gospel. For a semi-dark interval, until the Holy Spirit descends in the brilliance of red gold flame at Pentecost next Sunday. If only such intervals in our actual lives could be so effectively tidied away. The Kubler-Ross stages of grief, denial, bargaining, anger, depression, acceptance, may be over-familiar to those involved in pastoral care. But understanding the normality of the process does not negate, streamline, or even standardise the task of survival when we we lose a job, a relationship, a way of life, something or someone precious that we can't do without. Most of the time, we refuse to allow such an unthinkable thing into our consciousness. We are rightly superstitious of preparing for what we cannot endure. The ascension of Christ is a mystical subject and a realistic portrayal of the scene as described in the New Testament was avoided for a long time. Ancient ivories show Jesus as grasping the hand of God extended to him through the clouds and thus being drawn up from earth. Early Syriac images had Christ borne skyward in a chariot. In the 12th and 13th centuries, the scriptural expression, he was taken up, was given a literal meaning and the figure of Jesus was represented in a mandola, an oblong glory, a bit like a halo, in which Christ, the Virgin, or saints are represented as ascending to heaven, which was borne by angels to a certain height when a cloud received him out of sight. Giotto, the painter, was bold enough to attempt representing the scene in accordance with the scriptural description and painted his idea of it on the walls of the arena chapel in Padua. In the center of the lower part of the picture are two angels who, with raised hands, direct the attention of the kneeling virgin and the groups of apostles, also kneeling, to Christ already soaring far above them accompanied by numerous worshipping angels who are on both sides at some distance apart from him. No angel aids Christ to rise and he appears to head off under his own steam. Many pictures of the ascension are seen in galleries and it has become a favourite subject for the decoration of churches and cupolas. One such example is an altarpiece in Perugia. Requested in 1495 by the Benedictines of the city of Perugia, the original contract still being in existence, Perugino devoted three years to achieve an altarpiece for the altar of their church, and this is now preserved in the Museum of Lyon. Perugino has shown an idealised, elegant, harmonious scene. The resurrected Jesus is depicted in a, a double oval mandola made of wood or of reeds, decorated with winged heads of angels. On the top of the frame, further angels are playing heavenly music on various stringed instruments, a violin, a harp and a lute. Two flying angels support Jesus. Beneath the ascension of Christ stand two groups and figures, and directly underneath is Jesus' mother, Mary. The composition is organised symmetrically around a central axis 
from earth to heaven and connected by a set of gestures and glances, the Virgin Mary, Christ and God the Father. On both sides of the Virgin are the Twelve Apostles and Paul, although his appearance does seem beyond the brief given in the original contract as Paul was not one of the Twelve Apostles at the time of the Ascension. Paul has a sword and a Bible, the image of the defenders of the faith. Unlike the other apostles, he seems to be looking away from all the action, as if Perugino photoshopped him into the painting. In this image, even the angels are rejoicing that the Son should again resume his place at the right hand of the Father, until the time when he should come again with glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead. Imagine standing before that altar, wistfully bringing your losses and grief, gaining strength from our common experience of Jesus' departure, hoping for the occasional flickers of his presence, which enlighten and ravish. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all people in the church throughout the world. The response to the bidding, your kingdom come in us is as it is in heaven. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory to him who has ascended. A risen and ascended Christ, all authority in heaven and earth is yours. We, we proclaim you as our Lord. We offer you our love. We give you our whole lives. Lord, may we enter into your kingdom and be with you in glory, where you are with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Glory to you, O God, for Christ risen and ascended. King of kings, come rule in our hearts. Make us part of your kingdom. Ascended Christ, send us out to proclaim you to the nations. Let your church reveal your glory. In your power, let us uplift all who are down and despairing. We pray for all who have lost vision or hope. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. May we let the King of glory rule in our lives, that the kingdoms of the world may become his kingdom. We pray for a reign of peace and love upon the earth, a deepening fellowship between nations and peoples, for a time when no one will be exploited and no one neglected. Your kingdom come in us, as it is in heaven. Lord, let us see that your love rules in our hearts and homes. 
We pray for all who give hospitality to others, for those caring for visitors and strangers. We pray for hotels and bed and breakfast accommodation. We remember those who are homeless. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We pray for all who have fallen into sin and evil, for all who have fallen upon bad times, for all who have fallen into sickness, that in you they may be uplifted and rise above that which would bring them down. We pray for loved ones who are ill and for all who have the care of them. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We rejoice with all who are in the fullness of your kingdom, with all who have triumphed over suffering and death, and pray we may share with them in your glory. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Glorious God, in Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, you showed your purpose for your people and your love for the world. In Jesus, you fulfilled your promises and opened to us your heart. In his passion and death, we saw the consequences of our rejection and the depth of your yearning. Yet you raised Jesus from the tomb. In his resurrection, you invite us into the company of your eternal joy. And in his ascension on high, you seal as complete his work among us. So with angels and archangels, with St. Andrew and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name forever singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, your son at his ascension promised the disciples that they would be clothed with power from on high. Send now your Holy Spirit, that we may know the presence of your Son among us, and that the bread broken and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and we, when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Generous God, your Son told his disciples to stay in the city until they were clothed with the Spirit. Give courage to those whom you call to stay in places of danger and confusion, in isolation and in lowliness when their hearts are full of doubts and disillusion. Your son withdrew from his disciples when they did not know what the future would hold. Be close to all who face an uncertain future and deeply know their need for you. Your son's disciples were continually in the temple praising you. Give your church a fresh outpouring of your spirit and make it a blessing to all the children of your earth until the completion of your son's ministry becomes the completion of your whole creation. Until then, we worship you in songs of never-ending praise, saying, Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray in our own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation, but the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. Pray for the doctors and nurses and scientists and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. Thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Amen. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit 
And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.